Welcome to Ham Radio Dude, where we talk amateur radio gear by amateur radio operators. And maybe you're new into amateur radio or you're going to get licensed. 2025 could be a great year to learn a lot of new things. And one of those new things may be signal analysis. And a really useful tool for signal analysis is something called a spectrum analyzer. And you might be thinking, what the heck is a spectrum analyzer? Do I even need one? Today, let's take a look at the Tiny SA Ultra, a beginner friendly tool that may become one of your favorite gadgets. Let's get started on the desk. The Tiny SA Ultra is a compact signal generator and spectrum analyzer. This device will allow you to see radio signals or RF frequencies in a way that you typically wouldn't be able to see with a standard transceiver, such as this handy talkie right here. The Tiny SA Ultra includes a four inch screen and it allows you to do things like check the purity of a radio, hunt down sources of interference, or if you are just curious about what signals might be over the airwaves, this will help you out. The Tiny SA Ultra that was sent to me by CC did include a 50 dB 50 watt attenuator. At the time of recording, the cost of the Tiny SA Ultra with the Spectrum Analyzer is 199 US dollars, and without it, it's 188 dollars. And I will tell you that this Spectrum Analyzer is well worth the $10 difference. Whenever you use a Spectrum Analyzer to analyze the purity of a radio, you're definitely going to want to attenuate the signal. Not attenuating the signal will do something like fry your brand new Tiny SA. The Tiny SA Ultra is up to 5.3 GHz with two different segments, 0 to 800 MHz and 800 to 5.3 GHz. For a comparison, my Regal DSA815 only goes up to 1.5 GHz, and it's a lot bulkier. Now, don't get me wrong, this does cost a lot more. If we are in the aspect of amateur radio and you're looking to get on things on a budget, the Tiny SA Ultra might be a better solution for you. A signal generator can be used to test your receiver's sensitivity. So a lot of people will tell you about how bad the sensitivity of a radio is. And with the signal generator, you could actually see how bad it is. Hear your receiver's sensitivity. See, the Tiny SA Ultra does have a signal generator, which will allow us to generate a tone direct to the radio or through an attenuator or over the airwaves. You'll see all this in just a few moments, but that signal, that tone, as we continue to adjust it down and down and down, it's going to allow us to see how sensitive our receiver is or how much it could pick up with as little weak signal as possible. How about we take a look at both of those two examples, the spectral purity as well as the signal generator aspect. First, let's take a look at what is probably the most common use for this device, and that's going to be to check the purity of a radio. The first step is to calibrate your Tiny SA, and I went online to tinysa.org, and I followed the great manuals that they have on how to utilize this device properly. After calibrating the Tiny SA, I can now hook it all up and test the purity on 2 meters. On top of the 50 dB attenuator, the Tiny SA also has a 31 dB attenuator. You could adjust the attenuation by 1 dB steps. And this is important because you have to have proper attenuation to properly see a signal. In today's scenario with a 7 watt radio, we'll have about 55 dB of attenuation. 50 from the attenuator and the other 5 from the onboard attenuator. We could also change our frequency range so that we have a wider range. Currently, we're somewhere around 144 megahertz to 149 megahertz. But if we'd like to see the harmonics and the spectral impurities on different frequency ranges, we'll need to make this a wider signal that we're looking at. And now we have a window of 144 to 800 megahertz with our 5 dB attenuation plus our 50. And what that means now is when we key up in analog mode, we should see the fundamental emission or a very large spike followed by multiple harmonics. And now it's our responsibility to make sure that they're in compliance with the FCC rules and regulations, if that's what we're looking to do. Yeah. 
If you're utilizing your spectrum analyzer, perhaps you don't want to be keying down the whole time you're trying to analyze the spectral purity. And what you can do is you can pause the screen. As you can see right there, I froze it so it's no longer actively checking the spectrum. Let's go ahead and unfreeze it. And we'll key up and freeze it. As you can see here, after freezing the trace, we can now get a better look at the spectral purity of this radio. This video is not intended to tell you if something is a pass or a fail, but more so showing you the functionality of this device. But I will give you one more example. This is the Alluence HD1. And this would be an example of the spectral purities of the Alluence HD1. In my research and prior use, it's fairly comparable to the Regal DSA815 for amateur radio use. Now, what does a signal generator do? As I did mention earlier, one of the cool things about this is there is a signal generator on here and there's multiple ways to utilize a signal generator. You can utilize it, as I understand, with a attenuator. So for example, if we have this 50 dB attenuator in line, we would be simulating even weaker of a signal than we can if we're directly hooked up to this. And that's what we're going to do. Again, this is something new to me and I'm not necessarily completely familiar, but TechMinds has a great video on how to get this all set up. You should follow that one. Currently my level is at negative 18.5 dBm. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease the level by 10 dBm to see what happens here on the actual radio. Does our signal go down? And if so, how far does it go down before we can't hear the signal anymore? At negative 115 dBm, I could still hear the 1000 Hz, 3 kHz FM signal that I'm generating. So let me hook up the spectrum analyzer. Hook up the attenuator. Now I hope you're enjoying this video, but there is one thing I wanted to point out as an elephant in the room, if you will, and it really bothers me. But you only get so many cables and connectors when you get the Tiny as a setup. One of the things that I had to do was I had to plug directly into here with the radio. Now it doesn't sound like a big deal, and technically it might not be, but what I see happening is a lot of strain on both your radio connector as well as this small connector here. I'm not worried about this small connector. I'm worried about my radio's expensive connector that may be super expensive to replace. So the point of that is, is you probably want to have better cable solutions and more connectors if you're going to do something like this. Now that I've added the 15 dB attenuator to the already negative 115 dBm signal, I can no longer hear the signal and that would be very common. So what I will do is I will utilize the level and I'll go up 10 dB at a time. Now that we're at negative 75 dBm and we could still hear the signal, I'm going to walk it down toward negative 80 dBm. At negative 83 dBm, I could barely hear the signal. Very, very barely. Now, I want to remind you that that's negative 83 dBm and then the attenuator of 50 dBm. To get out of this mode, all you do is hit the mode button and you can go back to the spectrum analyzer. Where that functionality of the signal generator comes in really handy is really the ability to check the sensitivity of a receiver and maybe even compare it to other radios. But is there a way that we could compare the sensitivity all at once? Probably. For example, I have the Oshan KGQ10H next to the Anytone 878 Plus with the same antenna being used and at that point, it seemed like the sensitivity on the Anytone was better. But now that we're talking about this external antenna that's included with the device, maybe, just maybe, we could take a look to see what signals are available on the spectrum. Now, as we go ahead and plug in this antenna directly to the spectrum analyzer, it's very well noted and important to know that the potential to 
fry out your spectrum analyzer does exist. If you, for example, are using the spectrum analyzer to look at signals on the spectrum and you decide to key up right next to the antenna, too much power into the antenna into the spectrum analyzer without an attenuator can cause serious damage to your actual radio or rather to your actual spectrum analyzer, which I guess is technically like a radio. Let's go ahead and, well, let's actually tighten up our signal so that we could see just a certain range instead of up to 800 megahertz. Let's start at 162 megahertz and let's go up to 163 megahertz. My thought process on this is now we could see signals from NOAA weather radio, such as 162.500. Here, I'm going to analyze the signal from 162.490 to 162.510. But as we continue to zoom in more and more, we get a better understanding of how that signal looks. If I were to leave this right here and walk into another room, you'll be able to see when I transmit. Hi, I'm a tiny SA Ultra, and I only like 6 dBm of RF input or 4 milliwatts. That's very low power, and even a room away, I was probably in the wrong to not have it hooked up to an attenuator. These things can and will kill your SA. Now, surely I was in the other room, so I'm not sure if it picked it up or not, but I'm pretty sure that you might have seen a signal at 146.580 megahertz. That can be very useful with an external Yaki, again, keeping in mind that it might be nice to have an attenuator in line so you don't fry out your spectrum analyzer. I would be doing a discredit to this device if I did not mention the fact that it has USB-C, not only the charging capabilities of USB-C, but also the ability to hook this to a computer or a device and capture the spectrum analysis like we saw on the desk, but on a computer. And this comes in handy for many reasons. For example, if you were doing a Zoom call with somebody and you wanted to show them an issue you were having, they could see it in live view just like you are. Or maybe you're making a video and you want to show people a nice screenshot of the device you're showing them on the desk so they don't complain about the glare. Yeah, I'm very well aware. But I would like to thank the people over at CC who send me this device for the purpose of a review and an evaluation. Typically, I don't do reviews. I rather just show you how the device works and kind of show you the features that I find useful about it and the things that I'm learning in amateur radio because no matter what some salty ham says, Amateur Radio is about experimenting, furthering your knowledge, and learning a little bit more. Hey, I hope you have a great one. Thanks for watching the channel. 73 to you.